so Ruby, welcome. Um, we're going to work on abundance today, right? Yeah, thank you, Guy. So yeah. do you want to tell me a little bit about what the what the issue is that, that you would like to be addressed? Um, it's come up off and on throughout my life. Uh, I think there, there, there possibly is some underlying fear around money. Yeah. Um, I was quite young when I was aware of, you know, financial difficulties and things like that within the family. And although I consider myself like good at saving, good with money, there still seems to be some kind of underlying issue around money. Um, and currently the work that I do is pro bono. I don't, <laughs> I don't earn money. The more, all the work that I do is pro bono. So there's, there just seems to be something um, around money and earning money and abundance and it's something that my husband, my partner, has remarked upon as well, more recently, um, at this stage that we had in our lives. And it, it's, it's basically that it's not manifesting in your life. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. There's always this feeling that there's not enough or there's some kind of lack. Mm. So I'm just making some notes here. So, so I'm, not, I'm not being distracted mm -hmm. or doing emails or yeah. something. I'm, I'm just noting down some of the things. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah. So a sense of lack. OK, so um, maybe we would, in this case, maybe we would start in a very general way. Yeah. And we will uh, find out to what extent you're aligned with the, the goal of uh, having abundance, having uh, financial abundance, charging for your work and so on. So the way we'll do this is I will connect with you. I'll go quiet for a moment. I'll make a connection with the source and with you. Um, and once we're connected, I'll be able to ask your body some yes or no questions. First thing I'll ask it today is to, on a scale of zero to 100, how aligned are you? To living a life of, of, of abundance and is it is it particularly financial abundance we're focusing on today uh, it is actually um <laughs> i'm not I'm even slightly uncomfortable saying that but yes yeah. it is yeah yeah but when you're more aligned it'll be less uncomfortable i think yeah um, okay. so uh give me a moment i'm gonna go quiet and then i'll be back So you and I are connected now. Um, for this, uh, we're going to be using uh, a modality called the body code, which uh, you know I've worked on with you before. Uh, it's the main thing I work on with clients. Um, it's basically, uh, this is a mind map representing the body code. There's so many different um, types of imbalance. And by asking your body yes or no questions, we'll be finding what's at the root of, uh, of, of each particular issue that we decide to work on. So now I'm going to I'm going to be able to ask your body now that we're connected uh, questions about you. Your your subconscious mind knows everything about you. It's a computer. It's got everything stored uh, about everything that's ever happened to you in your current state. Um, so I'm going to ask um, on a scale of one to a hundred, how far is Ruby aligned to living a life of financial abundance? Is it more than fifty percent? It is more than fifty percent. Is it more, so it is more than 60%, but it's not more than 70. So let's see, it's not more than 65. Uh, it's not more than 62. It's 61, 61%. So it's actually not bad because sometimes people come with, with issues and they're, they're sort of down in the single figures and, uh, you know, mm. especially things like self-esteem and that sort of thing. And it, mm. and it takes a while to get up, but uh, we're starting at 61. So, um, then we'll go to the body code and I'll ask these questions out loud so you, you can hear what's going on. And we're asking, is there uh, an imbalance that we can address for Ruby today um, that can help align her to living a life of financial abundance and help her manifest that goal in her life? And the answer is yes, there is. 
So we're going to find out by muscle testing, which is what I'm doing now, um, what the issue is. And the first thing that's come up is a pathogen. There's actually a pathogen that's the first. It's not an obvious cause, but yeah. sometimes the causes for these things are really not obvious. So we're going to find out what sort of pathogen it is. It's actually a parasite. I'm just making a note and I'll send you the notes through at the end of, of what we've, we've learned. Um, we don't need to know any more about the parasite, but I always like to, to check how strong, what the strength of that parasite is in your body. Um, it's So my earpiece keeps coming out. Uh, it's 54%. The strength is 54%. So reasonably strong. Um, so rather before we um, we are going to wipe out the life force of this parasite so that it's not affecting you anymore. Before we do that, we always look at what's behind it. We know mm. what imbalances are are holding it in place. Because if we don't do that, then we clear the the parasite, which we can do. But the underlying imbalances will still be there, and they'll cause a recurrence of the parasite or some other imbalance. So we're mm. going to look at if there's anything behind the parasite, and yes, there is. Um, so uh, this time it's some sort of misalignment in your body um, and it's one of the more common misalignments um, so we're just finding out it's a misalignment of the uterus mm. which is one of the which is actually one of the top six types of alignment that there are mm. so we see what's behind that and there's actually another misalignment behind that there might be a few of these before we start clearing them. Yeah. This is something skeletal. And it's actually in the, um, the main part of the skeleton. Uh, it's in your skull. Mm. So this is the ethmoid bone. It's the bone um, at the top of the, the nose between the eyes. This is also misaligned. And we'll see if there's something behind that and there is and it's a trapped emotion so often these groups of imbalances they end with a trapped emotion there's rarely anything behind a trapped emotion so let's find out which emotion it is give me a moment and uh, i'll find out it's the emotion of dread mm -hmm. Um, and we need to know something more about this. We need to know the age that you experience this dread. It's very young. Mm. It's age six. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. See, the nice thing about this is we don't need to, to talk about it and understand what it is. We, we just identify it and get rid of it. So let's see, if is there anything else we need to know about the dread? There's not. So... Um, we're going to release it now. And how, the way that I do this is I'll, I'll swipe my hand three times. Um, the, the middle finger is uh, an acupressure um, trigger for the uh, governing meridian, which is this. So you, you'll sometimes see people clearing trapped emotions by putting their hand over their head. We can do it equally well on the hand. So we're going to do that now. So that dread's been released. Um, so now we can move back up, back up the chain of the things that we found. And we go to the ethmoid bone. And we, in the same way as we release the trapped emotion, we're going to realign uh, this ethmoid bone. That's done too. Um, so we're going to see if there's anything else behind the uterus misalignment. There's not. So we can do the same. We can correct the, the misalignment we found in the uterus. That's done as well. And uh, there's nothing more behind the parasite. It's the, so the parasite, the strength of the parasite has come down through what we've done from 54% to 11%, but uh, it's, it's still there to a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. So we're going to swipe now specifically with the intention of, of releasing the life force from this parasite. Okay. 
so that's released so that's that's gone as well now mm. so uh the best thing you can do to help especially with that parasite um so the, the life force has gone from the parasite the physical remains are still in there so uh, lots of water to flush that out today if you can yeah, um, lots of water's good anyway uh, after a session yeah. like this it helps the work flow um mm -hmm. I, I always put a, a drop of lemon a few drops of squ freshly squeezed lemon in because it hydrates the water and if you have anything to structure it with that would be ideal structured water mm. is, is ideal but um if it's available so yeah. i i wouldn't no normally uh check the effect after every set of imbalances on mm -hmm. the uh on what we're aiming for but for demonstration purposes today we'll do it so we'll ask is um uh, Ruby now more than 61% aligned with living a life of financial abundance yes so is she more than 65% aligned yes more than 70 not yet more than 68 not yet so is it six so it's 68 68% so it's jumped 7% for which is quite a good jump from just that that small number of imbalances so then always ask is it safe to continue it is safe to continue so is there another imbalance we can release for Ruby to help her manifest in her life this goal of living in financial abundance? Yes, there is. And it's another misalignment. This time it's uh, one of the organs of your body which is misaligned. It's the heart. Okay. So now we, again, same way, we're going to see what's behind that heart misalignment. It's another pathogen, Ruby. Mm, interesting. <laughs> this time, though, it's not. It's so with with pathogens. Often they are they're pathogens in your body. Sometimes they can be the energetic residue, the energetic remains mm. of pathogens that have been there in the past, or even these remains can be um, can be inherited as well. Yeah. so that's what what this is um, it's not a parasite this time it's a virus so it's the energy of a virus we need to know more something more about it um, which is unusual actually mm -hmm. we don't need to know where it is in the body it's not inherited you didn't absorb it from somebody else but we do need to know how old you were when when this virus uh, affected you and again this is young this is age 14. Mm. So I'll just note it down. Okay, that's all we need to know. So we'll okay. see what's behind that. It's something energetic. So there's an energetic imbalance here. So this is an offensive energy. Basically, this is an energy that uh, the intention of which is to harm you. Mm. Um, and what's come up is a cord so what that is is it, it's basically an invisible energetic connection with another person the most obvious cord uh, that everybody knows about is the umbilical cord um, mm -hmm. so obviously the, the mother and the child are, are physically connected to that once that physical cord is cut the energetic connection still re remains in place for quite a long time which is why mothers and their children can be very uh, connected with each other mm -hmm. um, but the problem that we have is that um, as we become adults, as we grow up, or even as children sometimes, we take this capacity to form energetic cords with people and, and just form cords with everybody, which, which is not mm -hmm. a healthy thing to do because they can sometimes be used unconsciously, totally unconsciously for malevolent purposes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out, um, we need to know something about who this cord is with. We might not need to identify the person, but we need to know something about them. So first we'll find out what age you, uh, you, you created this cord. So this was created at the age of 16. Okay. So we'll narrow it down a bit. Was it somebody in Ruby's family? It wasn't someone in, the, in your family was it a it was a male was it a male who was older than ruby no was it younger so it's a, a younger male do we need to know we do need to know a little bit more <laughs> um, so a younger male who's not in the family um what sort of environments were you in at the time were you at school presumably 
Yeah, I was at school and um, uh, my mother was a, a registered childminder, so it could have okay. been one of the children that my mother took okay. care of. It, I'm getting that it wasn't. It's uh, not that. I'm getting that it was somebody in school. Somebody in school. Okay. Uh, were you in a mixed school? Yeah, it was a mixed gender school. A child in your class, a boy in your class. It could have been, yeah. Could have who was been who class. was younger than you? Um, yeah. Probably not by much, though. I suppose I would have been one of the older children because of where my birthday was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we need to know more about this court? That's all we need to know. We don't need to know which boy in the okay. class. Okay. Um, so then we see if there's anything behind the cord. There is. And it's a misalignment. So this time it's a misalignment in one of the uh, one of the parts of the body. Um, in, in, in your digestive system in this case. Uh, and it's the colon. It's a misalignment of the colon. Mm. And behind this we have a trapped emotion. So again, give me a second and we'll find out what it is. panic. So an experience of panic that you had. So we need to know more about it. Not the age. This is inherited, um, Ruby. So you didn't actually okay. experience the, the panic. Uh, one of your parents did or, or one of your ancestors. Um, so this came from your mum, but she herself inherited it. She got it from her mum, who also inherited it from her dad, and that's where it started with. So it was uh, from your mum, and it came from her maternal grandfather. Mm. So that's all we need to know. We're going to, we're going to, it takes a little longer. We need to swipe more times to get rid of an inherited emotion. But the good thing about it is it generally clears it also, not only from you, but from everybody uh, in the family line from the person it originated with. And as that was about four generations back, it was, it's a, a good number of people probably. Yeah. So let's clear this panic now. Give me a moment. Yeah, thank you. So the panic has been released. OK, that's all there is behind the colon misalignment. So we can now correct the misalignment of the colon that we found. That's corrected. There's nothing more behind the cord with the uh, with the boy in the class. So let's release that cord as well. That's done. There's nothing behind the virus energy, so let's release that as well. That's done. And um, again, the heart misalignment we can correct as well. Yeah. That's done. So let's check in again uh, on where we are with this uh, alignment with living a life of financial abundance. Is um, Ruby more than 70% aligned with living a life uh, of financial abundance? Yes. More than 75? Yes. Not more than 77. We're up at 76 now. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is going quite well. Yeah. Um, so same question is it safe to continue stop me at any time if you've got anything you want okay. to say or, or no, no. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks, guys. Um, so is there another imbalance we can address to help Ruby manifest in her life 
uh, the goal of living in financial abundance? Yes. So this time it's, it's an imbalance in one of the circuits or systems in the body. It's in an organ, one of the organs. It's the bladder. So we see what's behind it. It's something energetic again. It's another offensive energy, Ruby. Sorry about this. <laughs> um, so this is a post-hypnotic suggestion. It's, a, it's an idea that got implanted to you when you were in some sort of suggestive state mm. uh, for some reason or another. Often these are, these are planted subliminally in music or, or, or films or something like this. Or it could just have been when you were uh, in a hypnotic state for some sort of reason. If you listen, sometimes repetitive beat music mm. gets you into that state. So we're going to find out uh, what that um, post-hypnotic suggestion was, uh, and then we'll release it. So. Okay. I'm finding this out by, by muscle testing and going through a, a, a uh, some trial and error and I'll, I'll when, when we get to an answer I'll, I'll tell you what it is yeah no so the um the suggestion is i don't have control mm. so you're you're believing that your uh subconscious mind is unconsciously obviously trying to manifest that in life because it believes it to be true yeah um so we have to stop your subconscious mind believing that to be true, which we'll do in a moment. Mm. But first, we're going to see if there's anything behind behind it. Yeah. Okay. So it's another energy. This time it's a, it's a trapped emotion. So this is a shorter batch. So let's just find out what that emotion is. So it's the emotion of feeling lost, lost as in directionless. Um, and we need to know more. We need to know the age when this occurred. Again, this is young. All of your things today are pretty young. Yeah. This is from age nine. That's all we need to know. So let's release this lost emotion now. There we go, that's done. Uh, so now we come to this post-hypnotic suggestion, I don't have control, and we're gonna release that in the same way as we release the other things. Yeah. That's done, and just to double check, does Ruby now carry the energy of this suggestion, I don't have control, and you don't carry that anymore? Okay. Um, now we come to the bladder imbalance and we can't release that yet because I'm finding that there's something else behind it. So let's find out what that is. Um, it's an energy again. Ruby, it's another offensive energy. This is a theme today, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This time it's a saboteur. This mm. is a type of energy that, that um, you, it, it almost creates an energetic wound in you um, or an energetic injury of some sort. It's often created unconsciously, totally without knowing it by somebody who has very strong and intense negative feelings towards you at some moment. Um, let's see if we need to know any more about this saboteur. We do need to know something more about it. And this is a wound. This is this mm. is this is a wound that, that that has been inflicted. That's all we needed to know. Okay. So, um, so there's something behind it. It's another energy. I'm not going to be d dramatically surprised if it's an offensive one. It's not an offensive energy this time. It's a <laughs> mental energy. Um, 
Now, this is a no will energy. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to explain. I know you and I have had these uh, many times in the past, but a no will energy is an energy where at one moment in your life you made a decision. Uh, I have no will to do X. It might be something that, you know, deep down you really want to do that now you you really um, want to do or, or something that you want to have. Um, but but the power of that decision at that moment is still with you and is still making uh, an effect on how your life is going. So we're going to find out what you decided you had no will to do or to have uh, just now. And what's come up is no will to move forward. Mm. <laughs> which is quite relevant, I guess, in this situation. Yeah. yeah. So that's OK. Um, and actually, there's nothing behind this. So this is the end of the line for this strand. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go straight and, and uh, release this no will to move forward. Mm -hmm. So that has been released. So does does Ruby now carry the energy of this no will to move forward? No. Um, but there is something more behind the saboteur which we need to find before we can get back and, and do that. So that's also an energy. And it, it is another offensive energy this time. Okay. And this is a curse. This is a curse that someone's placed on you or you've placed on yourself. In this case, it's someone placed on you. You didn't do it on yourself. We don't actually need to know more about this curse. Sometimes we need to know who it was or when it was, but this time we don't. Um, but there is something behind it that we need to find. And that's a trapped emotion. Mm. So Let's see which one it is. It's nervousness. Okay. And we don't need to know any details about this one. So uh, let's go ahead and release this nervousness. The nervousness is released. There's nothing more behind the curse. So let's now release this curse. The curse is released. We can release the saboteur. The saboteur is released and we can uh, correct the imbalance that we found in the bladder. So the bladder uh, has been reset as well in relation to that imbalance. So again, let's see where we are. So is Ruby now more than 80% aligned with living a life of financial abundance? She's more than, more than 85, which is great. More than 87. We're up to 89. So that was a powerful uh, set. And, and probably, you know, these things like saboteurs and curses and this no will to move forward, they all seem quite, quite significant. And it's moved us forward to mm. 89. Mm, that's great. So let's see, is it safe to continue? And it is. Um, is there another imbalance we can address to help Ruby manifest in her life the goal of living in financial abundance. Yes, there is. And it's an energy. This time it's a, it's a post-traumatic energy. Mm. Uh, and it's a physical emotional shock. So this is when basically you had an emotional shock at some point in your life, but it was such a profound shock um, that it affected you on a physical level as well as emotional. Um, yeah. So let's see if we need to know any more about that. We do. We need to know the age that it happened. More than 20, more than 30. This was in your 30s. Later 30s. Age 36. 
You don't surgery. Need... So, oh, it was surgery. Okay, <laughs> it was yeah. the surgery. <laughs> okay, that's all we need to know. Just age thirty-six. So yeah. we'll see what's behind it. We've got another pathogen, and it's another energetic pathogen. And this time, it's the energy of a mold. We don't need to know any more about it. So. Note that down. We see what's behind that. It's a trapped emotion. It's uh, abandonment. And we need the age of it. This is also in your 30s, 31. Yeah. Make any sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's all we need. Let's release this abandonment. Okay, that's done. But there's actually something more behind the uh, energy of a mold. And this is an emotional reverberation. So um, it'll be one of the same emotions as a trapped emotion, as the trapped emotions. But whereas the trapped emotion, when you have a trapped emotion, it's stored as energy in your body. It can go anywhere, cause any sort of disruption. An emotional reverberation is when the actual emotion rang out in you like a bell when it happened and, and it hasn't stopped properly resonating yet. Mm. So um, we're going to find out what that reverberation was and then we'll release it. It's, it was the feeling of being unsupported. Mm. And again, we need the age that it happened. Age 13. Okay. Uh, so we can release that emotional reverberation now. That's released. Okay, now we've got all we need to, to go back to this mold energy and release that. That's done. And the physical emotional shock from age 36, we're going to release that now as well. That's released. So let's see where we are. It looks like we're very close now. Um, so is Ruby now more than 90% aligned with living a life of abundance? More than, more than 95, not more than 97. Uh, it is 97, so we're up to 97. Uh, if your body will allow us to continue, we might be able to get this up to 100 today. So is it safe to continue? It is. Um, is there an imbalance we can address to fully align Ruby with manifesting the goal in her life of living in financial abundance? Yes. So it's a misalignment. Uh, again, it's in one of the systems of the body. And it's the digestive system again. It's the same system but it's something different within that system. It's the small intestine this time. Mm. Uh, so uh, let's see what's behind that. Yeah. Oh, it's just a trapped emotion. Uh, 
uh, it's sorrow. Mm. Yeah. Okay, again, we need the age. 11. So we're back there. There's a lot going on in this sort of 6 to 13 age today. Yeah. So let's release this sorrow. Sorrow is released. Okay, um, is there something more behind the small intestine misalignment? No. Uh, so let's uh, correct the, the misalignment there. So that's corrected as well. Um, so isn't Ruby now 100% aligned with living a life of abundance? Yes. Is there anything more we can do to help align Ruby with living a life of financial abundance? There's not. Is it safe to continue? Because if it is, well, it's actually not at the moment. <laughs> but what we, what we can do next time, or what I would normally do next, is because we've got that up to 100, but there's very often very, very small and subtle things that are blocking us from from achieving it even though we're 100% aligned so we would look for example at do I deserve um, mm. to live a life of financial abundance do I believe it's possible I might be aligned mm. to it but if I don't believe it's possible it's going to limit what I can achieve um, uh, is there uh, do I give myself permission some people find uh, mm. a block am I ready to do whatever it takes because I might be aligned to it but not uh, connecting that with the fact that I need to make some effort to make it happen. So all of these things we would look at next and bring all of those. Usually by the time we've got the, the goal up to 100%, there's not that much farther to go with any of those, although it does happen sometimes. So how's that, Ruby? Thank you, Guy. <laughs> <Very well. laughs> it, was, it was quite intense. Thank yeah. you did, you, did you feel or experience anything during? Some people do, some people don't. Um, no, I was fine. I was just trying to kind of mean remain connected and allow things to release and process you know, yeah. my guess is that it will take the rest of the day at least just to yeah. kind of process and allow things to shift and move plenty of water and physical movement help you know help mm -hmm. this process along help it to, to clear yeah. Yeah. I might go for a walk soon good thanks idea very, thanks very much thank guys. you ruby appreciate it mm -hmm.